Hello everyone, and welcome back to another Project Gladiator Weekly Overlook. Today I'll be covering the weather for the week of January 14th until January 21st. So starting off with our SBC outlooks and the threat, uh, the threats and the risk for uh, severe thunderstorms. Uh, for today, we don't really have all that much of a risk for severe thunderstorms, but we could see some general thunderstorms and some rain showers for southern Florida. And the same goes for tomorrow, where we could see um, uh, some general thunderstorms across Florida. Uh, that also continues into day three, where we could continue to see thunderstorms uh, for Florida, um, but then we can also take a look at our uh, day four to day eight outlooks uh, where we currently don't have anything issued. Uh, we don't have any days that say predictability too low, so overall the uh, SBC is fairly confident that we aren't really going to have all that much of a risk for severe thunderstorms uh, this week. Taking a look at our WBC outlook, starting off with our excessive rainfall forecast. Uh, for our day one to day five outlooks, we currently don't have anything issued as far as flash flooding. However, for our winter weather outlooks, uh, this is going to be uh, probably one of the primary things that we're going to be going over in um, uh, today's weekly overlook. Uh, for today, we are expected to see quite a bit of uh, heavy snow associated with the winter storm uh, extending back into Arkansas, the northern Dixie states, uh, mostly across Tennessee as well as um, up into southern um, uh, southern Kentucky and into West Virginia. Then we are also expected to see quite a bit of uh, heavy lake effect snow coming off the Great Lakes there, and then also um, uh, quite a bit of heavy snow for some of the Rockies. Uh, and then for tomorrow, we are expected to see uh, that system push off to the north into the New England corridor, as well as continue to see some lake effect snow there. And then for day three outlook, Again, we are going to continue to see lake effect snow as well as uh, quite a bit of heavy snow for northern Maine as that system pushes off uh, into Canada. And then we are also expected to see a ton of heavy snow for uh, for the uh, northern northwest there across the Rockies. And then for day four to day uh, seven outlooks, um, we aren't really expected to see anything too major. Uh, we are expected to continue to see uh, quite a bit of heavy snow for uh, the Rocky Mountains as well as some uh, lake effect snow. Uh, but we may also have the potential for a second uh, snowstorm that may impact um, the Ohio River Valley and move up into uh, into the New England corridor for day five and day six. Taking a look at our weather model, starting off with our 500 millibars like we usually do, taking a look at our uh, jet stream pattern for the week. Um, I'm not really going to be going too in-depth on this as I would uh, normally on our uh, daily forecast because this is uh, the general overview for the week. So I'm going to be primarily staying on 500 millibars for our jet stream and our upper air maps. Um, uh, for, uh, for the first scan here, uh, and um, mainly focusing on that winter storm. Again, we are seeing that cold front uh, push uh, further to the south, um, and uh, with support from that cold front as well as support from uh, this mostly uh, mostly zonal jet going across the vast majority of the United States, uh, we are expected to see uh, quite a bit of snowfall develop across uh, across the central uh, central plains and move uh, eastward as it is blown eastward uh, by uh, this upper level jet. Um, however, I I'm not entirely sure uh, of this completely, so some things may be wrong. Um, and I, I'm overall not really the best with uh, forecasting snowfall all that yet, so um, please feel free to correct me in the comments um, if I am wrong. And then um, as for uh, what we are expected to see later on, we aren't really expected to see anything too crazy. However, later on, we are expected to see a uh, fairly broad uh, trough here uh, move into um, the southeast, and that may, be, that may be able to support quite a bit of uh, heavy and widespread rainfall in the deep southeast. Taking a look at our composite reflectivity, I'm going to be going over the when and where you should be able to see our uh, snowstorm as well as uh, the rainfall in the deep southeast. Um, so starting off with uh, the the snowstorm that we are expected to see progress across uh, the Mississippi River Valley into the eastern United States and into the New England corridor, uh, we are seeing that move into uh, a lot of Tennessee and into southern Kentucky um, tonight as of now. Uh, we are also seeing a lot of ice um, and um, freezing rain across a lot of eastern uh, eastern Texas into northern uh, Louisiana and southern Arkansas. And I will get into I, I will go in depth on that. Um, However, for the future of the snowstorm, we are expected to see that push up into um, into West Virginia as well as Virginia and the New England quarter along the eastern seaboard into the 15th. And then into the 16th, we are expected to see quite a bit of lake effect snow continue uh, to pour off a lot of the uh, Great Lakes as well as uh, into the New England corridor uh, quite a lot. And then uh, as for those... Um, 
uh, as for those rain showers that I was mentioning uh, with that trough, we are expected to see the uh, see those begin to develop uh, in uh, Arkansas and Louisiana around the 18th, as well as uh, see quite a bit of snow across the New England or sorry the Ohio River Valley on the 18th as well. And then uh, we should see that move into uh, regions such as uh, Mississippi, Alabama, uh, Georgia, Louisiana, and uh, the Florida Panhandle, as well as uh, we could also see quite a bit of uh, snowfall for northern Mississippi, northern Alabama, northern Georgia, and southern Tennessee into central Tennessee uh, on the 18th as well. And then into the 19th, we are expected to see that push off into um, the eastern seaboard uh, into regions such as um, uh, North Carolina, South Carolina, the uh, Florida panhandle into northern Florida as well as Georgia, and then we should also see uh, quite a bit of heavy snowfall for uh, for northeastern Tennessee into uh, Kentucky as well as uh, West Virginia. And um, then around the very uh, the very end of the week, um, we don't really expect to see a lot, uh, but we may be able to see uh, a little bit of rainfall coming out of the Gulf of Mexico, as we are expected to see uh, quite a bit of heat and moisture return uh, towards the end of this week. Taking a look at our total snowfall accumulation uh, associated with this winter storm, um, I'm going to be going over how much snow uh, this snowstorm is expected to bring. Um, it does look like uh, Tennessee is expected to get the vast majority of it, as well as uh, southeastern Kentucky into West Virginia, uh, associated with this uh, strong snow band here, uh, which is extremely prominent. Uh, models are indicating that we could possibly see um, uh, potentially snowfall totals upwards of 7 to 6 and possibly 8 inches in some region uh, associated with this band of snowfall. So again, we are expected to see quite a bit of snow. Um, and because of how cold it is expected to be, uh, because of this uh, strong winter blast out of the north, a lot of the snowfall is expected to stick around for quite a while. Um, and it may be a while until a lot of this melts. So uh, we could see quite a bit of snowfall linger around across a lot of this region uh, for a very good portion of the week. So uh, definitely expect school and business closures, possibly for the entire week, if not a very good chunk of the week. Taking a look at our freezing rain, we are also expected to see quite a bit of ice that may f uh, that may coat a lot of the uh, the southern United States. Um, we could see quite a bit of freezing rain due to some uh, some extremely weak lapse rates, uh, which are getting down to three. And a lot of simulated soundings are indicating that uh, temperatures are rising a little bit the further up you go in the atmosphere, around 700 millibars to 500 millibars, uh, which is indicative of those extremely weak lapse rates. So with that, uh, that, that uh, small warm layer uh, aloft, that is going to allow for a lot of ice to form across the uh, regions uh, uh, impacted. So we could see quite a bit of ice uh, impact uh, regions such as eastern Texas, northern Louisiana into parts of southern Louisiana, um, southern Arkansas, uh, a lot of Mississippi into a lot of Alabama, as well as nor northern Georgia, and then also areas around the Tennessee Valley. So again, we are expect to see quite a bit of ice with this and uh, this could potentially lead to quite uh, quite dangerous travel impacts across the regions affected. So um, in the regions affected, we could see slippery roads uh, coat a lot of the um, coat a lot of the area affected. So I highly recommend that you do not drive unless you have an extremely well equipped vehicle for this uh, uh, for this type of conditions. Uh, and even then, I still highly suggest that you do not drive as um, uh, uh, people may not necessarily uh, uh, be all that prepared for this, even if you are. So uh, again, I highly recommend um, that you do not drive in this system as um, if you do have to drive, if, you, if it's absolutely necessary, definitely make sure you are staying extremely alert on the road uh, and taking extremely extreme precautions when driving if uh, again you have to drive in this in these conditions as um even if you are taking the necessary precautions you again don't know if other people on the road are so again definitely make sure you are taking extreme caution on the road if you absolutely have to drive in these conditions taking a look at our temperatures we are expected to see extremely cold temperatures impact the united states due to a cold blast coming out of canada um and out of the arctic um, this is going to lead to a potentially dangerous cold 
Um, and uh, the very real risk of frostbite in the areas uh, impacted, a very good portion of the United States is expected to see temperatures that are going to not only be well below freezing, but also potentially getting below zero. Uh, a lot of the Midwest and a lot of the Central Plains have been seeing temperatures that are going to be getting below zero. Um, it is expected to warm up by the end of the week. Um, uh, somewhat. It is still expected to be quite cold, um, however it is expected to warm up substantially, but uh, for the time being, uh, for a very large portion of this week, we are expected to see extremely frigid temperatures, and again, cold that could potentially be pretty dangerous, so uh, if you do have any plans outside, um, definitely make sure you're te checking the temperatures before going outside, and um, if you absolutely have to go outside, Definitely make sure you are grabbing a jacket because a lot of the central plains, a lot of the northern uh, U.S., and a lot of the Midwest, and even into the northern Ohio River Valley, is expected to see temperatures that are going to be getting below zero, and almost all of the United States, potentially down, uh, down as far south as uh, southern Texas and southern, or sorry, northern Florida, could be seeing temperatures that are going to be getting. Um, uh, below freezing. So again, it is going to be getting extremely cold across the United States this week. So again, definitely make sure you're checking the temperature if you have to go outside. And if you do have to go outside, definitely make sure you're grabbing a, a thick jacket. Taking a look at the possibility of severe thunderstorms across the United States this week, severe thunderstorms is probably going to be uh, the least of our concerns um, for this week. Um, and overall, they aren't really expected to be all that possible this week, especially with the extremely cold air um, and the uh, extremely dry air that we are seeing uh, blast out of the Arctic. That is going to prevent a uh, that is going to prevent ample instability to support the risk for severe thunderstorms. Um, and supercell composite does also support this. Um, however, there may be a couple of regions that we may have to watch out for uh, for a very very marginal risk for severe thunderstorms. Uh, supercell composite is indicating that we may be able to see the risk of uh, some very weak severe thunderstorms um, uh, may be possible across uh, Florida in uh, on the 15th and um, into the si into the 16th as well and then we may also see the possibility of some very weak severe thunderstorms on the 19th as well so we will have to watch those dates for the possibility of some very weak severe thunderstorms but overall uh, we aren't really expect to see uh, all that much of a risk for severe thunderstorms this week now that I've told you the weather, please go down to the description and check out the socials for Project Gladiator and join the Discord for any updates on Project Gladiator. If you live in any of the areas that I covered for this week, please stay with it for the time being. Um, if you notice anything might have been wrong with this forecast or you'd like to make a suggestion or ask a question, please leave a comment. I do read them and I do reply to them. Two other channels that I highly suggest you check out are One Nation Weather and Weather Watcher. The links to their channels will be in the description and hopefully I'll be able to see you guys on Wednesday with the Wednesday update.